Hello, and I would like to perform a centripetal acceleration calculation mixed with two-dimensional kinematics, namely a projectile problem. And let's go ahead and see if we can understand this problem. It says a ball on the end of a string is whirled around in a horizontal circle of radius 0 0.300 meters. The plane of the circle is 1.20 meters above the ground. The string breaks and the ball lands 2.00 meters horizontally away from the point on the ground directly beneath the ball's location when the string breaks. Find the radial acceleration of the ball during its circular motion. Okay, so whenever it's kind of an involved or multi-step problem here, I generally recommend that in physics we draw a picture to try to get, or like a sketch, to try to get our mind around this. So let's let this be the ground, okay? And then we'll kind of sketch to know that this is sort of the ground looking at like this, okay? Then we'll have the person standing here, okay? And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be whirling a string around in a horizontal circle. Now, because I'm drawing this in sort of a perspective way, I'll try to draw it sort of as an ellipse, okay? But this right here is the path, okay? So this is the path of the ball. Okay, so we should also write down our knowns. So let's see, uh, the radius is, whoops, here we go, 0 0.300 meters, that's 30 centimeters. The plane of the circle is 1.20 meters above the ground. So we call that H. Okay, so h is this distance, and we know what h is, it's 1.20 meters. And then, by the way, the radius of this is r, so we could label that, this is r. And then, <clears throat> we know the string breaks, so let's have the string break, say, right here. Okay, so let's say breaks here. And the ball is going to um, project horizontally away, um, and it's going to move 2.00 meters away. Now, if this is 1.20 meters, let's just make it a little bit further out this way. Just And again, this is just a sketch. And so I think the ball should take a trajectory, something like so. Okay. So the ball continues over to here. And it kind of lands here, and I think that this distance right here, from here to here, is 2 meters. And we might want to go ahead and give that a name. Let's call that delta x. And by the way, notice that I'm giving height and x here. Um, so let's go ahead and get an axis going here. So let's call the positive, whoops, I'm going to try to get this exactly straight up and down, the 180 degrees. So close enough. So that's the positive y direction, and then this should be the positive x direction. Okay. Okay, so with that in mind, we can say, uh, we know this delta x, and it says, find the radial acceleration of the ball during its circular motion. So we want to find the radial acceleration which we know to be the same thing as the centripetal acceleration. Now let's think about this problem, okay? So in fact, actually I should do equals the centripetal acceleration. Okay, now let's think about how we're gonna manage this problem. So I would say, because it's not mentioned otherwise, and for the sake of simplicity, assume no air resistance. So with no air resistance, this is a projectile problem for the second half. So I'm assuming that basically there's sort of two segments to the motion. So the motion can be thought of as in segment one, it's got um, uniform circular motion, and in segment two, it's projectile. So let me write that. So uniform circular motion, and then part two is projectile. 
And I think the key link is that the velocity from the uniform circular motion, so let me emphasize that with a different color. So the velocity from the uniform circular motion, that's here. Okay, so this is the velocity. The velocity from the uniform circular motion is equal to the velocity in the x direction initially of the projectile. Notice that the projectile, it launches off exactly horizontally before it projects off. So that's the great way these two are tied together. So because we know the height and we know the horizontal displacement, I think we can solve more in the projectile than we can in the circular motion. So we should use the projectile equations first for um, no air resistance and a falling body. And we should um, go ahead and uh, see if we can figure out what this V was. Okay, so let's see uh, how we're going to accomplish this. All right, so let's go ahead and start by writing an X and Y chart. Now an X, Y chart I usually recommend for projectile motion because it organizes <clears throat> the data. There are multiple data values and <clears throat> we can say certain things always on Earth for projectile motion, but we can also say certain specific things to a particular problem. So let's let this be X and Y. And again, this is for the projectile. And again, this is kinematics. So we know that if we write down the X initial and the X final velocity, the X displacement, time, and acceleration in the X direction, there's a corresponding y initial velocity. There's a corresponding y final velocity. A y displacement and a time and a y acceleration. Okay? So we should put some equal signs on these because there are 10 variables, many of which are related and many of which are well known numbers. Okay. So, first of all, in the y direction, we always know what the acceleration should be. As long as the positive y direction is directed upward, the acceleration due to Earth gravity should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared in SI units. That we always know on Earth. In the x direction, the acceleration is actually 0 meters per second squared. That's because the object is not accelerating. It's just moving at a constant velocity. And as a result, these x velocities are actually both the same. And by the way, this x velocity is going to be the same thing as the x velocity, the, the velocity that we're looking for. So this is our ultimate question mark for segment two. Okay, so let's move on and say, what other piece of information do we know? Well, we know the displacements in the x direction, it's positive 2 meters. So let's write that down, 2.00 meters. And in the y direction, this is where we have to be careful. The height is 1.20 meters, but the displacement is downward. So this should be negative h, which is negative 1.20 meters. Don't forget, these are vectors, so they have direction. There's one other key insight. We said the x initial velocity should be the total initial velocity. So the y initial velocity must be zero. That's an important insight. Now, with kinematics, you need three pieces of information with the list of variables to solve. I think we have that on the y side. And one more thing that I should mention, since we're looking for the x initial velocity and we have the displacement, notice we're going to need the time. But notice the time is going to come from the y side because if there's one variable that is the same on both sides of the chart is time. That's because x and y are both functions of time. Time is the parameter. Okay, You can imagine that for some time 
the ball is at some location. So we're interested in this location, the time that the ball is in the air until it about strikes the ground. So let's go ahead and first solve for this time, then we'll bring it over here, and then we'll solve for the x initial velocity. So we want to, let's write this down, uh, find the time using free fall kinematics. Okay. In order to do that, we um, use the equation that ignores uh, v um, y f v y final. Okay. So in order to do that, we should use the displacement curve. Now the displacement curve should look like this. Hopefully it should be on your equation sheets. Delta y is equal to v y initial multiplied by t minus one half g t squared. Okay. So notice that I'm generally fine if whenever there's a zero, you insert a zero. So this zero means this entire term is just zero. So we only have this term, the minus one half gt squared term. So we don't have to use the quadratic formula or any kind of factoring. We can just solve for time by multiplying by negative two. Negative two delta y is equal to gt squared. We'll, we'll need to divide by g and take a square root minus 2 delta y, delta y is one variable, over g, and the square root of this is equal to the time t. Now, by the way, we don't need a plus and minus out here because we know it's a positive. Secondly, do you also note that since there's a minus under the square root here, delta y must be a minus because otherwise it would yield a negative solution. So just to save space, I'm going to put the numbers in over here. Okay. So let's put those numbers in. So we need, let's see, negative 2 times negative 1.20 meters, all divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an 8. OK. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go to the calculator to calculate this. So what I'll do is I'll first do on, and then I'll clear and then I'll do second square root, then I'll do alpha f1, which will give me the opportunity for this little stack, n over d, numerator over denominator. So this will be negative 2 times negative 1.2, I don't need the 0 because significant digits are unimportant in calculator, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So we take that square root, we get 0.495 seconds, so that seems reasonable. Let's write this down. About 0.495 seconds. Okay. Now we want to use that time on the x side. So on the x side, the only equation, since it's constant velocity, is delta x is equal to vx initial times t. So we just need to divide by t. So delta x over t should be this vx initial and by the way this vx initial is what we're seeking in red so let's change color so this is the vx initial so let's put the values in so that's 2.00 meters divided by the time of 0 0.495 seconds calculator so we need 2 divided by and it's useful if you can keep numbers in your calculator because then you do less rounding, just divided by that previous number. So we get about 4.04 .04 meters per second. So we'll write that down. So Vx, which is the same thing as Vx initial because it doesn't change, is approximately, what did I say? 4.04, .04? okay. So 4.04 .04 meters per second. And then finally, we should be to calculate the centripetal acceleration because the centripetal acceleration depends upon that V. So this is um, AC is equal to V squared over R. And V again is that 
velocity we've said before. So there we go. Let's put the numbers in. Okay, so we've got 4.04 .04 meters per second, and we square it, and we divide that by the radius, which was given to us in the problem, of the horizontal circle. Okay, that's 0 0.300 meters. Okay, so let's finally calculate this. So we need approximate so we can keep this previous number in our calculator if we want so we can do parenthesis this previous number oh sorry i should hit enter <laughs> and square that and divide by the radius of let's see 0.3 meters okay so we'll write this down it's about 54.4 so let's see that's ac is approximately 54.4 meters per second squared. Okay, and this should be our final answer. Okay, so we've solved for the centripetal acceleration because we used the projectile problem and we were able to solve. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please smash that like button if you like this video content. And please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. Please share this with people in your sphere of influence. I want to thank you very much for your attention and watching another High Peak Education video. I will see you in the next video.